Good morning, St. Mark. All those who stand, would you please stand for the God for the reading of God's word? Word. I'll be reading Psalms 150, and it reads, "Praise the Lord, praise God in the sanctuary, praise Him in His mighty heavens, praise Him with His mighty acts, praise Him according to His abundance and greatness, praise Him with His trumpet sound, praise Him with harp and lyrics, praise Him with cymbals and dance, praise Him with string instruments and flutes." Praise Him with resounding symbols. Praise Him with loud sounding symbols. Yes. That everything that has breath, yes. that everything that has breath yes. of life, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Yes. Now we'll turn it over to our amazing praise team. Amen.
somebody, somebody, give them a little high five and say good morning. Good morning. Now is the time that we want to worship the Lord. Amen. Scripture says they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. How many know that God is truth? Amen. Hallelujah. You can clap your hands. God is truth. Amen.
time out to work and do our daily things, but this gives us time to just worship the Lord, amen? Yeah, yeah. To reflect on all the good things that he's done for us and all the things he's going to do for us, amen? Yeah, yeah. So those of who you will, those who will, you can sit or stand. I think that we need to give reverence to God by just lifting our hands this morning, amen? Yeah, yeah. And just reflect on the goodness of Jesus and reflect on all the things that he's doing for us. We live in a chaotic world today, but yet and still, God is still God, amen? Yet and still, God, he sits on the throne, amen? Yet but God, he's still doing those things that we never thought that he would do for us in our lives, amen? Yet through all the trials and tribulations, he's a wonderful God, he's a powerful God.
Good morning, St. Mark. What a beautiful and wonderful day it is. Yes. That the Lord has smiled on us one yes. more time. Yes. Yes. And for that, we come into this place yes. together in His name yes. to praise and worship Him yes. Yes. for the God He is. Let us go to the throne of praise. Eternal God, our Father, we approach your throne of grace as your children. Not to beg or to plead, but to give you thanks for what you've already done, what you're doing, and standing on the promises of what you will do tomorrow. And if it be thy will, Lord, continue to baptize us afresh in your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we don't come today we just come to give you thanks. Thanks for a new day of your grace and your mercy. To thank you for a reasonable portion of strength and health. And to thank you, Lord, for what you did at Calvary. With your son, Jesus Christ, who looked beyond our faults and saw our needs. And so, Lord, we want to thank you afresh. Give you the praise. And Father, we ask your blessings upon this congregation. Keep us in fellowship one with the other. Keep us mindful of each other and our needs. For you have appointed each of us to be a blessing to the other. And Lord, we ask your blessings upon this choir as they sing from their hearts the melodies of praise and worship. We thank you for the deacons and the trustees, Lord. And we ask you to open their minds and their eyes to the needs of the people. We thank you, Lord, that you've allowed this church to stand for 118 years to be the light and the salt of this community. And now, Lord, Thank you afresh again for the pastor of this church, Minister Barry, and his wife. And we thank you, Lord, for all of the blessings that you have rendered unto them. And Lord, allow us to recognize the gratitude of thanksgiving. And allow us once again to look beyond each other's fault and not be a stumbling block on their past, but to celebrate their presence, to celebrate what you've done in their lives, to overcome their past, that we might be mindful of our past, that you look beyond our faults and saw our needs. And so tomorrow, Lord, if it be your will, Allow us to wait and to walk in the steps that you have ordered. Guide us in the direction that you would have us to go. For somebody is looking for salvation. And allow us to be that contact and that can do it that will bring you into their lives. In the name of the Christ we pray. In Jesus' name. And the people of God said together,
cheated us in there. This is my story. This is my song. We also have a story and a song that causes us to praise the Lord all day long. So when you think about what he done for you, you have to praise him all day long. Turn with me, if you will, to Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. an honor to be before you once again. As you know, Pastor Bear is still out, getting him some well-needed R&R. &R. Right about now, he should be really enjoying himself. But he should be back with us on next week. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. Say amen for you. Please stand. And it reads, One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful where he was put there every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have. But what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth's walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. The Lord and bless to the readers, hearers, and especially the do doers of his word. If I had to title this particular message, it would be there's just something about the name Jesus. No doubt, Brother Washington, this is a familiar passage yes, to most of us. Yes, you have probably heard it dealt with on several occasions. Right. But its wonder and power continue to captivate us no matter how many times we hear it. Yeah. I try to imagine how Peter and John must have felt during this time in life. Not many days ago, they had stood before an empty tomb where Jesus had been laid. Shortly after that encounter, they decided to return to fishing, unsure what their future held. There is little doubt there were more questions than answers during that difficult time in life. We have little recorded information concerning the 40 days that Jesus spent with the disciples between the resurrection and ascension. But these must have been days that transformed their lives. The doubt and fear is now gone and they are committed to carry on even though Jesus has been taken from them. This account takes place in the shadow of Pentecost. The Spirit has come and indwelt the believers, and the church is alive and well. All right. It is on this day that Peter and John encounter a man who has a great need. 
He was hopeless in himself, but there was power in the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, his life was transformed. There is still power in the name of Jesus today. It is a name that is above every name. It is the name that all must bow to and recognize as Lord. Yes. Will you go with me as we look at the lessons that this text, that we can learn from this text? I know I won't be before you long, because I know many of you have your meat seasoning and marinating, and you got your soda pop on the ice, and, 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 and you just waiting to throw it on the grill. Am I right about it? You ready to get the 4th of July popping? <laughs> Am I right or not? These men, well, let's look at verse 1. Verse 1, we see the confidence of the apostles. Right, right. It says, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Being the ninth hour, this verse gives insight to the confidence of Peter and John. It reveals their attitude and commitment. Yeah. It also reveals their ministry. We find that Peter and John went up together to the temple. This doesn't look like the men we read about in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. It isn't the same, same men who went fishing, filled with doubt. Yeah. These men have encountered a mighty move of God as the Spirit descended upon them. They have witnessed countless souls coming to the Lord in salvation. Yeah. Their spiritual lives have gone from one extreme to the other. Yeah. They have traveled from the valley of despair to the mountain of victory. Yeah. It is often easy to get complacent and satisfied while on the mountain. Many have come to know Christ, but these men were not satisfied. There was a hunger in their heart for more. I am thankful for all that the Lord has done, but we cannot live off of yesterday's blessing. Yes. We must never get complacent. We must always have a hunger for more of what God has to offer. We also see in verse 1 their unity. It says they were, it says they went up together. We no longer see them arguing about who will be the greatest. Peter seemed comfortable standing alongside John instead of out front. They are working together for the Lord. Yeah. Unity is essential if we are to be productive for the Lord. We cannot expect to reach our fullest potential if we are not uni unified. Yeah. The church needs more unity in our day. Yeah. It isn't about who's out front or who's getting the most recognition, but working together for the glory of God. We'll never achieve that unity in ourselves, but through the power of his name, we can. Not only do we see the confidence, ministry, and unity of the apostles in that first verse, we also see their priority. It says Peter and John went to the temple at the hour of prayer. The Jews had three times during the day set aside for prayer. Yeah. They have made their way for prayer unto the Lord. Yeah. This may not seem significant, but consider all they have experienced in recent days. Yeah. It would have been easy for them to feel as if prayer was not necessary on a regular basis. Yeah. It would have been easy for them to feel as if they had obtained a level of superiority and didn't need to bother with it. But they continued to seek the Lord and worship him. They were well aware that the Lord had performed these mighty acts among them. There is a great lesson to be learned here. If we expect to see the Lord's work among us in great and mighty ways, we must realize our dependence on him. It is the Lord who has brought us here today. He is the source of our salvation yes, and yes, our strength. Yes, yes. Were it not for his mercies and grace, yes. we would not have made it this far. Yes, we must never get to the place that we feel as if we no longer need the Lord. Without him, we 
can do nothing. The old church used to sing a song, we come this far, leaning on the Lord. In verse 2 and 5, we see the condition of the afflicted. Here we find a description of the lame man. Notice in verse 2, he was lame. Yeah. It says, And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, yeah. to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Yeah. We don't know how old this man was, but we know he had been lame all his life. Yeah. He had never known the joy of walking as others did. Yeah. His life had been lived bound by his lame. That is how each of us was. We were all born in sin, separated from God. Our sin nature was inherited and we were born crippled by sin. The Bible tells us, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. That sin prevents us from walking and fellowshipping with God. Our only hope was to be set free from the bondage and crippling effect of sin. Verse 2 also indicates he was loved. This man had no way of providing or caring for himself. He was hopeless in his condition. He depended solely on others to care for him. He was carried daily to the beautiful gate that he might ask alms of those who entered the temple. He may have been lame, but there were those who loved him enough yeah. to carry him to the gate. I'm glad for those who loved me even when I was bound in sin. Yeah. I rejoice that I had a mother who carried me to the house of God yeah. when I was a child. I'm yeah. glad for those who prayed on my behalf that I might be saved. Yeah. I thank God for a pastor who preached the word to me and pointed me to Jesus. We need that kind of love for those who don't know the law. Yeah. They can't get there in themselves. Someone must get them to Jesus. Amen. Verse 2 and 3 says he was looking. Yeah. Yeah. He, was, he was laid there daily at the gate of the temple, yeah. which is called beautiful, yeah. to ask alms of, those of them that entered into the temple, right. who sent Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked them for alms. This poor lame man was laid at the gate daily hoping to receive alms yeah. or hope or help from others. He lay there day after day searching for someone to have compassion yeah. on him. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine as the crowds began to gather, he would look on them in great anticipation. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe as one came by that seemed to be wealthy, right. his heart would rise with hope. Yeah. No doubt he was often disappointed as many walked right on by and never gave a passing glance. He was looking for help, but sadly many were likely not looking to him. Uh, I can recall while I work, I go to the intersection. How many of you have ever stopped at the intersection and there's a homeless guy on this corner and a homeless guy on this corner looking for something? Some of us, we won't even look them in the eye. We just Look straight ahead because we don't want to look at them because we know they are looking for something. Am I right about it? Do you realize there is a lost world out there searching for something in their lives? They are looking for some means of peace. They are looking to find a solution for their longing in their soul. Many are looking to this world, but it would never bring the peace they so desperately desire. Many are looking to the pleasures of the flesh, but that too will only leave them empty. I wonder how we view those who are looking for peace and contentment. Do we even care that they are lost and undone before the Lord? Do we ever stop to think that apart from Christ, hell will be their home? Do we have the same time to have compassion on a soul who needs salvation? In verse 4 and 5 says he was lacking. Yeah. It reads, and Peter, and Peter fasting his eyes upon him with John, said, look at us. Yeah. And he gave heed unto them, yeah. expecting to receive something of them. Yeah. 
He had been here many days before. This was nothing unusual. This man fully expected to receive a piece of money or some means of material help. He was not thinking of receiving healing. He was simply looking for a handout. This man's need was greater than a piece of money, and yet he was not thinking towards that end. It is likely that he had resigned to his desperate condition and had no hope of ever being freed from his crippled state. Many in our day are in the same condition. They are looking to the world for a solution. Many have no idea their need goes beyond material wealth or physical evil. Few ever see the real need in their lives. For few ever recognize that their spiritual need is of, is of grave importance. Most never see the need of salvation. There is no desire for spiritual things. We could gain the whole world. But if we die lost without Christ, what would it matter? Verse 6 and 8 gives us clarity of the alteration. The lame man's life was about to be forever changed and it would be clear for all to see. Let's look at the elements involved in this change. Verse 6 gives us the truth of God's word. Then Peter says, silver and gold I have none. But such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Peter was simply saying, I don't have what you want, but I do have what you need. He could need more corn in his cup. He needed Christ in his heart. Peter knew the truth of the gospel could set him free. Yeah. This man needed the power of Jesus working in his life. Those around us think they know what they need, but in reality they don't have a clue. We don't have what they want, but we certainly have what they need. We have the truth of God's word. The world doesn't need to be patted on the back and made to feel good about their sinful ways. We have the offspring often privilege and responsibility yeah, yeah. to tell the lost and dying world yeah, yeah. about the one who died for yeah. their redemption. Yeah, 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 yeah. Verse 7 gives us the power of God's touch. Y'all yeah, yeah. still with me? Yeah. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Yeah. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Yeah. I'm sure that he had been touched before but never like this. As Peter took him by the right hand, he was immediately filled with the power of God. The Lord's power brought about healing and restoration to one had never walked before. The touch of Christ freed him from the bondage he was in. See, people need to feel the touch from the master's hand. We can't save them in ourselves. Neither our programs nor our preaching will be of any benefit without the touch of God. See, man will never be saved until the Holy Spirit of God begins to work in his heart. But once man feels the touch and respond to it, he can be set free. Yeah, that's right. Finally, in verse 8, we see the transformation. Come on, come on. And he leaping up stood and walked. Yeah. And him went them into the temple. Yeah. Walking and leaping and yeah. praising God. Yeah. Things began to pick up around the temple yeah. when the power of our Lord showed up. Then the lame, the man's lame, the man, lame man's life was transformed in an instant. This transformation was twofold. It transformed his walk. And he leaping up stood and walked one and one who had been carried to the temple gate. Cripple was now walking and leaping and praising the Lord. He walked as he never done before. I can assure you, once you are set free from the bondage of sin, it will affect your walk. You will walk in ways you never imagined. You will find yourself in places you never thought possible. You will have a companion to walk with.
preaching each step of the way. He transformed his worship. He entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising the God. He immediately entered the temple praising God. There had been a change in his life, and he couldn't help but worship the Lord. He had lain there all those years, but he had never worshiped like this. When you receive a touch from the Lord, it will transform your worship. It will put running in your feet, clapping in your hands, and a praise on your lips. When you receive a touch from the Lord, you will see Jesus in a different light. And you will have a compelling desire to worship him in ways you never worshiped before. See, you may be lame, you may be lame around the church for years, but you have never really worshiped. What you need is a touch from the Lord. See, one touch from the Lord will change your whole life. He'll give you a new way of time. He'll give you a new way of walking. He'll give you a new way in your attitude. The places you used to go, you won't go no more. Wouldn't you agree that there's something about the name of Jesus? There's something about his name. So the name of Jesus has the power to save from sin. The name of Jesus has the power to free from bondage and shame. The name of Jesus has the power to cast out demons, heal the sick, and raise the dead. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess.
now up to oh, yeah, the Lord's Supper. Oh, okay. We don't want to forget that. Come on, brothers.
began. Jesus and his disciples were in the upper room eating. They were celebrating the Passover festival. And Jesus said, I will not eat again with you until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And while they were eating, Jesus took the bread, he praised God, he blessed it, and he gave thanks. Father God, thank you for this bread. It symbolizes the bones in your body, the blood that came down the cross for our sins, Lord. We just want to say thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. He broke it and gave it to his disciples. And Jesus said, Take, eat, for this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Yeah. And then Jesus took the cup. He praised God. He blessed it and he gave thanks. Yeah. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity for one more time. Sharing this large supper. Holy Father, we pray that you would bless this wine that it represents the blood. Gave it to his disciples, and Jesus said, Take, drink, drink it all, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which was shed for many for the remission, for the forgiveness of sin. When they had sung a hymn, they went out into the mountain of olives. Thank God, thank you.